Hey you guys, so here's a small little recap of how Pen Show was. I didn't vlog it really this time. I usually try to go through and do a day-to-day -day sort of recap, but I really have learned just over the last couple of years of doing this, I have such a hard time just because I'm, I'm having so much fun. I'm talking to my friends, I'm hanging out, but here's some video of how it went over the course of the weekend. It was a blast. It was at the old hotel from the first time I ever went to a pen show, which was nice. It just easier to navigate. The one from last year was just too big and, and tough, but I had a great time. I made some new friends. I made some, I saw a lot of old friends. I finally got to meet the people that I had talked to online for the last couple of years. And I have to give a shout out to my new friend, Mac. Immediately recognized me from the channel and we chit chatted in the parking lot because I packed up my car already and we went back there and talked Waterman's for two and a half hours. It was just, uh, an absolute blast. I'm, I'm excited to work and collaborate with him on things in the future. And yeah, it's just an awesome show. At the San Francisco Pen Show this year, I'm going to be doing a seminar on Beginner's Guide to Antique Waterman's 1884 to 1928. That's the plan at least. And I think at LA next year, I'm going to do a table. I think I'm gonna have a table. So to start things off, I did bring my postcards of 173 Broadway and 191 Broadway of the showroom with 30,000 pens inside that case, which is crazy. I brought these along with me with the intent to sell them, but I ended up just handing them out to people and leaving them on tables to take. And I'm happy to say that, you know, uh, probably over a hundred of them were taken home with people and that's super cool. I'm going to be doing more things like this uh, in the future, along with the posters that I've been restoring online. Because yes, that's right, I've been restoring posters. That's been a lot of fun bringing in my little Toyuka craft tray here. And to kick things off, on Thursday, I showed up for the day zero. I didn't know there was a day zero, but I got a text message saying, Hey Craig, are you going to show up for day zero? It's a trading day? Awesome. So I showed up and I saw some of my friends there. And uh, the first thing I picked up was this. So it is reverse because it is a printing block, but Waterman's Ideal fountain pen for Christmas. The old Christmas box on there. Just a really, really cool printing block. I got this from my friend Dimitri of Pen Kingdom. Also, the, there's the rare pen guy. Pretty cool. Has this employee pass on the back of it for some reason, but super neat. And I got another one of those. This one, again, to combine sentiment and service give a Waterman's Ideal fountain pen and it has the crisscrossed, my guess is lever filling pens. It looks like it has the raised threads on it. Actually, what's kind of interesting is it looks like it has the pen with the raised threads on this side and on this side it has the pen with the shallow threads. So that's actually kind of cool, kind of kind of interesting. But you can see the chasing on there and clip cap, but it is backwards. It is reversed because it is a printing block for a newspaper. Right before walking in, after getting those printing blocks, I actually had a trade go through with my friend Gabe. I traded my Waterman number 20, the giant one that I did in the video of the world's smallest pen and the world's, you know, the biggest pen that Waterman made. And trade was for these two pens, which is a, a Waterman 26. It only has a number five size manifold nib on it, but it is a pre-globe. So that means a logo on there. It's gonna be hard to see, but it, it doesn't have the globe logo on there. And it is three spoon feet. So it has the early three Fisher feed, which was Waterman's first patent. It's worn, it's nice, but it's a nice 26. I'm gonna fix it up and make it nice for the collection. The other one is a 16P or which is a pump filler. And I'm gonna make a whole video on the pump fillers, but they weren't very popular. They made them from 1903 to 1909. And they made so many of them that they still existed into the twenties. They still had them available for sale, but you, unscrew the back here. You have this little piston thing, you get that wet, you pump it up and it fills it up with ink. The problem is when you were pumping it up, you didn't know when to stop and ink would start spraying out of the top here. So you never really got a full fill on there just because you didn't want to have ink spraying all over the place. And if you were to unscrew that and pull it out, all the ink would drip out the front. But it was more the, the fact that you would be like filling it up and you were like, okay, I'm not sure how full it is. And we just start spraying ink at the top of the, uh, pretty crazy. But this thing is, is really in good shape. The nib looks great on there. I don't think it's, it needs to be set a little bit deeper into the actual section there, but it's kind of different though, because there is no section to unscrew. It's you back unscrew the back of the pen, but this doesn't actually, there's nothing to unscrew here. So with that, I now have a 12P, a 13P, a 14P, a 15P and a 16P. And the, 
the number just means it's the, the nib size. So there we go. Those are the first two pens I acquired. Then I got this from Pierce Jarvis. It is a Waterman's 515 VS. It's with its original number five size keyhole nib on it from England. The pen was made in the US for the US market. Somehow it ended up in England and got sold with a number five size keyhole English made nib. It's, it's a pretty dang cool rare pen, all solid gold in a vest size and for a number five size it's a it's a pretty big safety pen i thought i brought enough cash with me and i was uh incorrect i did not i was sitting at a table looking at nibs and next to me was brian johnstone from canada i used to have these display cases and brian sold them to me and he sold me a few other pens just a really nice guy. His grandfather worked for Waterman's and I saw this. This is a number 45 desk pen. They, this is probably around 1908. It's really hard to see the imprint on there, but it's there. It's easier to see with a loop, but you can just make out the logo there. And I never, I never owned a number 45. After 1917, they changed the numbering system. So a 45 became a safety pen and the desk pens just became a desk pen. They didn't really have a number for them, but these kind of fell out of favor for like a regular sort of desk pen that you stick into a base. Still, it's a desk pen with a cap. It was meant to be used at home. And what's cool is you can take off the cap and still post it on the pen. And then it looks just like a normal pen. And it is a eyedropper. And uh, this one is the threaded one. So it has this sort of threaded grip section. That way you just have a better grip on the pen when you're using it. Thanks a lot, Mr. Johnstone for this. Next, I went up to my friend Matt Greenberger's room. He is Dr. G of Dr. G's Pen Apothecary. We were up hanging out in his room, having some snacks, having a drink. And David Nishimura of VintagePens.com. We were all just talking pens and stuff like that. I wasn't really buying anything. And I had mentioned, I was like, the only things I'm really looking for are like Chatelaine holders or Chatelaine pens. That's when David pulled out these. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm looking for Chatelaines, but I'm looking for Waterman Chatelaines. I'm, and he goes, these are Waterman Chatelaines. See the ideal logos on top and they're on the bottom of the holders so these are chatelaine holders they were i think men and women but i think it was mostly women that had these they're pretty big ones though so maybe it was men too but these are holders for your eyedropper pen so you put your pen in there this is your little case you carried around with this is before they had clips clip cap didn't come around until 1905 put on your vest chain uh, women wore them um on their basically on their their hips or on their belts and uh i had always wanted one and and david nishmer had two this one has a really pretty floral pattern all the way around it it's a little bit better shape than the other one but i got these for 400 dollars a piece and i had never thought i was gonna find one and they're in stellar condition so thank you david for those as I'm sitting there though, I'm also talking about the Chatelaine pen. This little box, which this is a Canadian box, but it's one that I didn't have. And inside was the Chatelaine pen. These pens were marketed towards women and they had this little fleur de -lis pin that you would pin on and then you could unhook it to use the pen. But it's, look at this thing, it's, it's crazy. It has just these two little tiny threads and this is the number two size. It also has a star nib on it. They made them up to an eight size, which is crazy. I can't imagine, you know, that's, that's a lot of ink, an eight size. It's a thick pen. This is a six size versus a little two size. What a great, cool looking pen. Always wanted one of these as well and happy I found one. So that was day one and my budget was already gone. All the money that I had brought with me, I, I needed to immediately get more cash. On day two, I didn't really pick up any pens, but I did get some cool ephemera. This was another thing that I had pre-negotiated with my friend, Pierre Gustafson. It's an original salesperson's wallet for invoices and whatever else, but these are like actual leather salesman wallets so these things can be seen in this photo and they're over there on the counter salesman wallets trays that is that super cool and i didn't just get one of them i got two of them for 150 dollars and this one has its original 191 broadway envelopes Super crazy cool, wrapped in this little delicate little ribbon here. Such exciting ephemera. I was carrying these around, showing everyone. I just thought they're so cool. These things don't survive, it's so cool. Later I was gifted this 
my friend Troy Paps. I owned this pen. I sold it to Troy. It had a crack in the section and Troy uh, restored it for me. So he found a new section, he put a sack in it and it's my pen once again, which is very nice of him. And now that I got this as a gift from him, I'll never get rid of it. And he knows that. He also scolded me for giving things away. So he said, stop giving things away. <laughs> so maybe I'll listen to him in the future and actually like legitimately stop giving things away. But you know, it's, it's kind of what I do here on the channel. And um, I just love meeting new people and interacting with them and enabling them. So I met up with Scott Jones again, and I got this pen from him. It is an Aiken Lambert with stoles on it. I don't know what the stoles means or anything like that, but it's an Aiken Lambert. It's basically a Waterman 52. It has an Aiken Lambert number two nib on it, but it is essentially a Waterman 52. And this one was probably made by Waterman after Aiken Lambert was purchased by Waterman. So pretty cool. I gave Scott a pen and as a thank you, he gave me this pen. So he we took it as an even trade. It's my first Aiken Lambert. I also got this one. The pen doesn't even have a nib in it, but I got this one from Mike Daigle mad mercantile and he wanted me to have it just because uh of the imprint on here so it says capital made by aiken lambert the aiken lambert division ellie waterman co united states of america so this is a later pen it's from like the 1930s it's still made out of hard rubber um, the cap's all messed up he just wanted it for me to have as like a reference and it's a interesting pen and uh you know i don't i'm never gonna really write with it but i just have it for my references i want me to have some more things that are connected to the Ellie Waterman company. So I got that. So thank you, Mike, for that. On Saturday, I didn't buy anything, but I did sell some things. So I actually sold a couple of pens. I tried to recoup my cash the whole time I was there after that first day, after I picked up all these, I just tried to sell some things to be able to afford to buy some things. And in the end, I ended up selling like four or five pens. And then I just kept the cash. I ended up leaving the show with more money than I than I had originally. So that's, that's really positive. That's really good. I didn't really buy anything else until the very last second. So on Sunday, I went over to my friends over at Show Design. Picked this up from my friend Matthew Belknap, and all he said is I really like purple and blue. And he's a big Star Wars fan, so I think this is a nice fit, but it is a gasp. It's a ballpoint. Yeah, I picked him up a, a nice ballpoint so that he can use it at work. Uh, we can't really use fountain pens when we're writing things down at work, but I figured this might be a nice thing for him to take to work. And I also did get him a matching section with a fine nib as well, so he can... He gets like two pens in one. There you go, Matthew. Uh, by the time this video comes out, he will have already received this pen. Last but not least, there was a whole grab bag. Basically, Dimitri had a table across from his table once the show was almost over. And he was like, just piles of pens and he goes, you know, pick what you want. And he was basically like, take take it home for free. There were some gems on that table. Not, I mean, not gems. That These these aren't pens that I would like collect or anything like that, but they're pretty nice for, for what he was at, he was saying. Like, they're, he's like, these are all junk pens. Like, just take what you want. And then I showed him what I had picked up and he was like, um, hundred bucks. And I go, okay, I'll give you a hundred bucks. So let's kind of go through these together. I'll slide this off the side. I don't even know what kind of pens these are, but this is a Schaefer. It's a Schaefer Junior. They just need sacks and stuff. So it's not, it's not really that bad or anything, but it's a pretty nice looking little celluloid pen. I'm not a celluloid person, at least for Waterman's. I'm not a celluloid person, but you know, this is a good little pen fixed up probably, you know, like 40, 50 bucks, but I don't know. I'm just going to learn how to, how to fix these things up. Yeah, definitely, definitely tight. You don't want to pull a stuck lever or anything like that, but you know, not bad. Nice looking celluloid on there. And this is probably from the late thirties or early forties. Next we have a wasp vacuum fill fort madison iowa and i just was like oh it's the christmas pen interesting acid green and uh like raspberry red celluloid on there it's got a very art deco looking clip a little bent up it's got this big steel nib on it wasp 233 medium made in the usa so the nib actually matches which is pretty cool it says vacuum fill but it has a lever on it and these were all kind of made it has like this little fake jewel at the bottom these were made during world war ii and they just used whatever parts so it's not a vacuum fill but it has a lever on it and where the vacuum part would have been on this barrel has been cut off and then like a fake jewel has been kind of glued in but this is like a complete pen this is how it would have looked it's just cheap pens made during world war ii 
Again, that could be fixed up, sold for 30, 40 bucks probably in my estimation. Uh, this is a Parker dual fold. So this actually has, you know, the jewel on top, jewel on the clip. This is 1930s, 1940s. If you unscrew the back here, it's got a little like vacuum fill button on here. And you know, cleaned up. This, this could also be a nice pen, like a 50, $60 pen. It's got a 14 karat gold nib on it. So three, I'm gonna guess this is probably 1943, that three, but I, again, I don't I don't know these pens. That's a Parker. I don't really know anything about Parkers. I used to have some Parker Vacumatics, but uh, I'm gonna guess 1943 on this one. Next, we have a Waterman Celluloid something. I don't know anything about these. Uh, I know I'm like a Waterman, only well, like kind of a Waterman expert, but when it comes to celluloid, I have no clue. I'm guessing this is from like the 30s, but I have no idea. Waterman's Man in the USA, doesn't say anything else on it, has a remnants of a sticker on it, and it has its 30s Waterman nib, and the section like doesn't look right to me at all, but everyone was like, yeah, no, that's right. It's a, uh, you yeah, know, lever filler. Um, I don't know how to take these ones apart, but I might learn. Uh, looks like there's some condition issues on the celluloid right there but it's, it's a cool, it's a cool looking green. I just, again, don't really know anything about it, but I could probably, you know, fix it up and sell it for 20 bucks. I just want the lever to match up. There we go. Cool. Next, we have another 1930s. This is a 1930s or 40s Waterman's. It's a, just a slip cap. This one says Waterman's 14 karat on the nib. Again, Waterman's made in the USA. So this might actually be from the same era. So like maybe this is late 30s, but I think these pens are hideous. I just picked it up because it's like, hey, look, it's a Waterman's, but this is some janky crap. <laughs> oh, okay. I, did, I just didn't have it all the way on. I guess you have to push really hard. So I pushed, put it down and I was like, wow, this is really loose, but yeah, you have to snap it on. Okay, now it's on there. It looks okay. It looks like a Parker 51, but I mean, these are junk. No idea what kind of model it is. There's no numbers on the bottom, so I have no idea what to tell, how to tell what it is, but... Yep, this is another one that I bought, and I think I could, you know, fix it up, put a sack in it, and sell it for five to ten bucks. I think that's a good deal. I don't know how long the AA Waterman company was in business, but the story with AA Waterman's Arthur AA Waterman was a salesperson for Waterman, and then he didn't like how the company operated or something, so he set out to make his own pens, and then I think he like he stole like trade secrets or something. I don't know exactly, but he started the Modern Pen Company. <laughs> but this this imprint is just crazy because it's like Arthur A. Waterman Company, New York, Modern Pen Company successor, patent November 17th, 1903, and October 11th, 1904. Not connected to the L.E. Waterman Co. And he was sued by Waterman. So he had to put that on his pens. So there was a point where like it didn't, it just said Modern Pen Company and it didn't say any of this, but because he was sued, uh, he was court ordered to actually put not connected with a L.E. Waterman company, which is super funny. Turns out he was related to Lewis Waterman. He was actually uh, like a sixth cousin or something like that. So they were actually related. And this guy was just like, I'm going to leave this company and do it better. And uh, it didn't last that long. Jason looks really nice on it. It looks pretty good for a little ring top. This is basically like a Waterman's 52 and a half fee. Cool little pen. Uh, that fixed up probably could sell that for you know like 50 60 bucks i think and then i got these two little little dainty tiny little dip pens it's definitely like a pearloid and not actual mother of pearl but they have uh two little dip nibs on there with these little holders and they're just cute this has a little just a, i don't i don't know what the name is of that that brand on there of the nib and this has an estrabrook extra fine elastic nib so it should be a little bit flexible but, but that is my little hundred dollar grab bag of of stuff that i pulled off of a table from dimitri and there were so many cool deals one of my friends like picked up like 30 pens for it seemed like 30 pens for 30 dollars and they were all things that he could sell so great things at the show like that of course you know endless stationary inks modern pens and things like that but i really wanted to at the show to really gravitate towards the antiques you know i'm going to be doing a seminar at the san francisco pen show about you know beginner's guide to antique watermans and really sharing my passion and all that and next year in la i really plan on having a table so that i don't necessarily have to walk around and, and film everything but which i which i still didn't do I hopefully have 173 broadway branded merchandise or something to give out or talk about and maybe cool ephemera or maybe some duplicate things and i really plan on having some waterman 12s 
that are with flexible nibs that I can sell that anyone who's interested in getting into an antique pen, here's a pen that you don't have to worry about repair down the road or anything like that. It's so easy. It's an eyedropper. So I'm going to have all kinds of cool stuff in the future, but I really appreciate you guys. I appreciate everyone who came and said hello to me at the show. It was a blast and I can't wait to do it again real soon. And that's the video. Thanks so much, you guys, for checking it out. If you have any questions, go and leave a comment down below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more content like this. And of course, thank you guys so very much for coming along on this adventure with me through all of the Waterman things and all of the not Waterman things that I picked up at the show. I had a blast. I can't wait for San Francisco this year in August. I've already got my hotel room. I'm very excited about it. And my seminar. Never given a seminar before. Give my take on what are good options as far as getting into antique pens coming from a user point of view. And that's what my seminar is going to be a little bit more about, but just with Waterman's. If you're coming to San Francisco, come hang out with me. It's going to be fun. I'm going to have some stuff to give away. And uh, next year for the California Pen Show, I'm going to be a dealer. I'm going to be a vendor. I'm going to be selling stuff. I don't know what I'm going to be selling yet, but it's going to be cool. Thanks so much, you guys. Check out my Instagram at Craig Rockanova, and I'll see you guys all in the next video. All right. Peace.